Okay, we have here today an interesting integral from the MIT integration B2014. This was problem four. We have the integral from zero to two of this infinitely nested expression dx. Okay, to get started with this, what I want to do is I just want to take our integrand and manipulate it. And what I can do is just set this whole thing equal to y in order to get, in order to rearrange this. So, and again, I only wrote three terms, but this is an infinite expression. So if we just look at, we have y squared of this whole thing. What I want to do with this is if I just square both sides, on the left side we'll have y squared, then this is just going to remove this outer radical. So we're going to end up with x plus this whole thing here. But the thing to notice because this is an infinite expression is this piece right here, even after squaring it and removing one term, this thing's infinite. So this is actually the same thing as our original integral y. So we can just write this in here as y. And what I want to do is find a value for y in order to rearrange this into something we can integrate. So what I need to do here is solve for y in this equation over here. So I'm just going to actually rearrange this by getting everything on one side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract this x plus y, and we'll end up with y squared minus y minus x equals 0. But now at this point, we just have a quadratic equation in y. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula on this to try to solve for a value for y. So let's see, we have, for our quadratic formula, we have minus b. The b value here is going to be this minus 1. So we're going to have 1 plus or minus. Then we'll have the square root of b squared, which is minus 1. So that's going to be 1. So we'll have b squared minus 4ac. a is 1. And our c value is going to be minus x. It can be a little confusing at first when we're putting variables into our quadratic formula, but it's fine. We'll just treat this as our c value. And this is all going to be over 2a, but again, a is 1. So this is just going to be 2. Then we'll simplify this a little bit. I think I'll divide the two into both parts. So we'll have one half plus or minus. This whole thing is gonna to reduce to one plus four x over two. But now at this point, the thing I wanna do is deal with this plus or minus. Now the thing to know when we look back at our original integral, because the whole thing's inside a square root, our y value has to be positive because this whole thing is positive. Just looking if we use the minus sign here, Within these bounds from zero to two, this expression is always going to become negative. Like if you just plugged in a one, for example, you get square root of five over two, half minus square root of five over two, that's negative. So it turns out we need to get rid of this minus because that's just going to create negative values that are impossible for this y. But now at this point, we found a y value and we have it all in terms of x and this is something we can integrate. So what I'm going to do is take this and plug this back into the integral and we'll finish this thing off. Okay, so now that we've manipulated this down to this new expression for y here, we'll just integrate this. And this isn't gonna to be too bad, I'm just gonna do this with a u substitution. So for my u, I'm gonna call my u equal to one plus four x. Then for our du, derivative of one zero, derivative of four x is just gonna give me four dx. And I think what I'll do here is just solve for dx. So we can say that dx is gonna be equal to du over four. And so now I'll just go ahead with this substitution Plugging two in here for x, we're gonna end up with two times four is eight plus one, nine for the upper bound. Plugging in zero, we're gonna have one for the lower bound. Then we're gonna just rewrite this. We have our one half plus one half. This is gonna become square root of u. I'm gonna write this as u to the one half. And then dx is gonna become this du over four. But I can actually take this one fourth and bring it outside of the integral. So we'll just bring a one fourth out here and then we'll just go ahead and integrate this thing. So integral of 1 half is gonna give me 1 half u, and then integral here, we'll have our 1 half, this is gonna become u to the 3 halves. Take the reciprocal, this is gonna be 2 thirds, and we just need to evaluate this from 1 to 9. Before I do it, let's just cancel the 2's here, so this becomes a 1 third, and let's see what happens when I plug this in. I'm just gonna keep this 1 fourth outside of the whole expression. We plug in a 9, we end up here with 9 over 2, then we'll have this 1 third. Plugging 9 in here, first I'll take the square root. Square root of 9 is 3 to the third, gives me 27. Then evaluating at 1 here, the first part's going to give me a 1 half here. Evaluating 1 here, this is just going to give me plus 1 third. 27 divided by 3 is just 9. I probably could have made the simplification a little bit easier on myself, but let's just finish it off. So we'll have our 1 fourth up front here. I'm gonna turn this nine into, I can write this as 18 halves. So adding 18 halves and nine halves, this is gonna give me 27 halves. Then combining this, I can write this as three six plus two six. So this will become minus five over six here. Then I'll just get a common denominator. I can write 27 over two as 81 over six minus five over six. 
and we're going to have 1 fourth times 76 over 6. Multiplying 1 fourth times 76 over 6 gives me my final solution of just 19 over 6. Just barely had enough space to finish that off. So pretty interesting problem from MIT 2014. We'll stop it right there. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.